Hello and welcome. I call the channel The Jungle Nook and this is a video in a series that I'm putting together on how I care for my tropical house plants. And this video particularly is going to focus on my winter preparations for how I care for my plants during the winter growing season. I know that we're taught in the winter that we should stop fertilizing and reduce the amount of water that we give our plants because they, they grow slower in the winter and they don't require as much. But contrary to popular belief, tropical plants actually don't go dormant in the winter and they do continue to grow and can put out lots of nice new lush growth. So we're going to talk about a variety of topics. We're going to talk about photosynthesis, and how by reducing water and nutrients, even though the amount of uh, natural light that they received is reduced because there's less hours of daylight available, how we're actually limiting the plant's ability to maximize the available light that they're actually receiving. I'll also talk about root health and watering. Uh, we'll discuss how and why uh, winter up potting is important, especially if you discover your plants are root bound and how you can do that without harming your plant in the winter. So first with watering, I know a lot of us have heard that, you know, you should let your plants dry out in between watering. And that is important, but I think a lot of us may be allowing our plants to overly dry out, allowing the soil to dry out too much. Dry soil, when it's time to water again, actually that's not bone dry. Uh, dry soil, think of a sponge and when you submerge it in water and then you take the sponge out and you wring it out the best that you can to where you can't get no more water out of the sponge, but the sponge is still moist. That is the point at which the soil is dry and requires to be rehydrated and needs more water. You don't want the soil to completely dry out. If you do, you run the risk of damaging the water roots. Those are those small hair-like roots that grow out of the, the main roots, you know, those primary and secondary roots, the roots you can see real easy. If you allow your soil to completely dry out, you can damage those roots. And then when you rehydrate, the plant has to take time and energy and moisture to repair and regrow those roots. And those small water roots, they're not only absorbing the, the water, but the water itself is what is absorbing the nutrients from the soil. And that's how the plant gets its water and its nutrients. And it needs that water and nutrients to engage in photosynthesis. So even though in the winter there are less hours of natural daylight available, if it doesn't have the water and nutrients, it's not going to be able to engage efficiently in photosynthesis. And some of that time that it is in light, it's actually not able to use the light to, to get the sugars and the starches and everything it needs to be able to grow. Also, by reducing the amount of water, we are contributing to lower humidity levels within the house and around the plants themselves. For a lot of us in the winter, the humidity levels drop. And if you're allowing the soil to overly dry out in between watering, there's no, there's no excess moisture within that soil to be able to evaporate and to help stabilize and maintain a constant humidity level. As far as humidity is concerned, for tropical house plants, a humidity between 50 and 60% is ideal to maximize growth. But even more important is to try and have your humidity level 
to remain constant. Plants really do not like uh, fluctuations in the humidity. They prefer the humidity to stay constant. Here in this room, my humidity stays in the high 40s and low 50s. And I don't seem to have any problem with the humidity level. Now, yes, in the spring and fall, with the change, you know, in different seasons, uh, the humidity level will, will be a little bit higher or a little bit lower. But for that season, I, it needs to stay constant, it needs to stay steady. Uh, right now, my humidity level is actually in the high 60s, but that's because of the time of the year. It's cooler out, and we've been getting a lot of rain. Um, when we get into winter, my humidity will be probably right in the 40s, but I keep my soil nice and moist. I also have a lot of fish tanks, um, which helps to keep my humidity a little bit higher and stable. But stable humidity is really important, as well as the temperature. Although these plants do come from a, a tropical environment, they actually grow just fine between about 67 degrees to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you can keep a, a steady humidity and a fairly warm temperature, with adequate moisture and nutrients, the plant will be able to maximize the limited amount of light that it's receiving in the winter and continue to grow and push out new foliage. And it will have a, a better chance of holding on to and maintaining the existing foliage it has. As far as winter up potting, if you're keeping a nice steady supply of humidity and the house is warm and you're continuing to keep the soil moist, not, not, not wet or saturated, but moist, like I said, with a, a sponge that you wring out, you can't get no more water out of it, it's still moist. If you keep your soil like that and... Uh, you know, it's got the water and the nutrients that it requires, then you can still up pot in the winter. If you can wait till spring, yeah, definitely wait till spring, but let's say you overlooked a plant and you notice that it's root bound. Perhaps you notice that the soil's drying out quicker and you know, you look at the roots and it's root bound. Well, if it's root bound, then there's uh, less volume in that pot of soil compared to root to be able to hold the moisture longer. So you may have to water more frequently, but if you're simply taking your plant out of a pot and sticking it in a new pot to up pot it, and you're not doing any kind of uh, root pruning you're not dividing the plant. You're just moving the plant from one pot into the next without disturbing the root structure. It is totally fine to up pot in the winter as long as it's in a, a warm climate with adequate humidity and you're not reducing the amount of water. The plant will actually appreciate that. If you keep it in that that pot throughout winter with it being root bound, you can actually do more harm to the plant over time. I like to try and prevent my plants from becoming root bound. That's why I don't like up potting and I put my plants into larger pots. If you've ever seen some of my other videos, sometimes they go into quite large pots. However, the size pot that I put it in would never be larger when I would stop up potting. Um, if the plant's not going to get huge, if it's not a variety that grows really big, um, I'll, I'll just try to anticipate what would be the final pot that that plant would be in when it has gotten full grown. 
and I'll put it in into that size pot. And that way, I am eliminating several up pottings. That reduces my maintenance, and it also reduces stress on that plant. And that way, it can uh, continue to grow, and I don't got to worry about shocking it or damaging the roots during an up pot. Now, there's some things you can do with your lighting. Of course, you can, you can uh, use grow lights. But besides that, believe it or not, washing your windows, the outside and the inside of the window, can increase the amount of light that's coming through your window, as well as removing the screens on, the win on those windows as well in the winter. Um, and you can, uh, you can, uh, wipe off the dust, clean your leaves. Those two things and right there, that can help the efficiency of, uh, your plant to engage in photosynthesis because it will allow more light to actually touch the leaf and help the leaf to, uh, to have more light for photosynthesis. But... You know, grow lights are, are a great way to uh, increase the amount of light, especially the, uh, the duration of the light. Winter time, right before winter, is a great time to uh, invest in some, some new lights, some new grow lights. Um, some other things that are important in the winter, too, would be to perhaps move your plants a little bit away from windows that might be drafty. Um, also be aware that they're not too close to uh, heat sources. Like if you have forced air, you don't want the vent actually blowing that air right onto the plant. Or if you have uh, uh, radiator heat uh, under your windows or something and you have your plants right there on the windowsill, you don't want that heat coming up and... Uh, and drying those plants out. Clustering your plants together, uh, that will help with humidity. And you could even, even put little trays of water in the winter, in the winter uh, underneath the plants. Perhaps you uh, have a wood-burning stove or something. You could, put a, you could put a kettle or something full of water right on that wood burner and uh, that way you know, you're, it's evaporating that water and increasing the humidity too. But be aware that const, a constant humidity level, a stable humidity level is really important. I don't like using um, humidifiers because perhaps the, uh, you know, once all the water's gone, you wait an extra day or two to, to refill it. That can cause fluctuations. Uh, I also don't like spraying my plants with a water bottle because really only while you're actually at the plant and spraying it is the humidity level going up. As soon as you're done spraying, that humidity level is gone and it also can leave droplets on the plant that can cause water spots that are unsightly. But it can also promote things like mold and funguses and, and even insects. Um... The winter time too, you know, when you're moving your plants around and getting ready for, for winter and uh, throughout winter, even summer, whenever you see plants that are, that got leaves that are starting to, uh, to turn yellow or brown, you may want to remove them because the plant may be struggling to keep them alive and it's not a efficient use of the, uh, of the resources of the plant. To keep that leaf alive. You'd rather have those resources go to new growth or to help keep existing foliage nice and healthy. So something I want to just talk a little bit more about is the fertilization. I use a slow release granular fertilizer that I will apply in uh, spring and again in fall. And I like doing that so I don't got to worry about missing applications. But I do actually reduce the amount of fertilizing that I do in the winter 
And how I do that is in early spring, again in summer and sometimes early fall, I'll use a liquid fertilizer on my plants because they do grow more in the summer and they use more nutrients. There's more natural light. Uh, the temperatures are even warmer. But I don't do any additional fertilizing other than what they're getting from that slow release granule fertilizer uh, in the wintertime. Also, as far as watering, your hanging baskets that are hanging from the ceilings, it's warmer up at the ceiling and they may dry out a little bit quicker. So you want to keep a close eye on them you can't really see the soil if they're hanging from from the ceiling but what I'll do is I'll just put my hand underneath the pot and lift it slightly to see how light it is to see if it, it, it requires a little bit extra water now I've given this advice before but I, I really think a lot of people actually are letting their plants dry out a little too much in between waterings so I like to advise that if you're only fertile, or I'm sorry, if you're only watering, you know, several times a month, give them a small amount of water once in between when you would normally be watering, just to ensure that you're keeping that, <clears throat> that soil nice and moist. 